Greetings, everybody. Brother Stu here, back to Baba Videos. I want to give God thanks for the for His goodness, His loving kindness, His tender mercy, Him blessing us to see a new year. Um, thank God for His no goodness of our own; it's only by His grace and His mercy that we're still in the land and the living. Uh, we make our wrongs right, and when we say our crooked paths straight by His goodness and His His word. I want to acknowledge the Lord in all my ways that he may direct our path and in all things he alone get the glory. We don't want to lean to our own understanding. Um, I want to thank God for I watched the beloved brother's video. Um, the word prophet, Brother Clinton. And it's I recommend you, you watch it. Um, I can put the link at the bottom. Um, it's called Stepping on the Sheep. I believe, and I was recently blessed by it because it um, made me do some self-reflecting and self-examination and the essence of it um, is what made me think on myself and my channel is that sometimes I have to be more mindful of the audience because I don't know the, the level of spirituality or the level of understanding of, of the subscribers who watch my channel. And sometimes I may have a topic that could, that could be very well meet and a babe in Christ may not understand and it could be hard for them to digest. But what motivated me what, what, in listening to his video, what made me think is he, he, he was absolutely right about um, when new babes come into the Lord, they don't, they're not going to understand everything. Even those who are seasoned or have been in the way of truth for a period of time, we still are learning and growing. But a new babe, we have you just like a natural baby. You have to handle handle them sensitively and gently as they mature and grow day to day. And um, and I was just reflecting on myself and saying, you know, sometimes I have I look through a lot of my my topics on my channel. I said, you know. I have to be ask God to help me with with wisdom and to be more mindful of the content. Not saying that it's wrong, but just be be mindful. Okay, this is a public forum, so even though it may be a, a message of meat, a babe can watch it. Is is has the ability to watch it, and I have to be mindful of that. That I have to by the grace of God, break certain things down so they can understand. And some, some may get it, some may not. That's why I leave my email at the bottom for people to ask me questions. But um, I didn't want to do a long introduction, but it's just, this is what this is about. It's just self-reflecting. And I was going to title this video called Teach Them. And it's very true. And how when new babes come in, they're learning. Mm -hmm. And you we, ha we can't just expect them to d run before they crawl. And I was looking at myself and I said, you know, I, I have been at times maybe too impetuous. And I have to remember how I was treated. And I remember... A time when um, I was at a, a meeting, uh, a church meeting, and um, I, had, I had on regular civilian clothes. I had on a pair of jeans, nothing no, nothing like how I used to dress. Um, just had on a pair of jeans, some, some New Balance sneakers, and I think I had on a, a long sleeve grayish shirt. And it had like a blue little cursive writing, I think it said Hollister on it. And um, 
and I saw this older older brother and I said, praise the Lord. And he looked at me and said, I wouldn't know you was a brother by the way you were dressed until you said, praise the Lord. <laughs> I'm laughing now because I'm like, okay, like, okay, you know, somebody else probably would have been heavily offended and, and left and never came back. But I'm like, okay, thanks be to God that he had me that way. And, but that same brother, even though he was, according to organizational standards, dressed apart, was accused of molestation. So, and I share that not to put that person down. I don't even know if they're still alive, honestly. But I was just, like the video was saying, okay, you can't just beat on someone unless you're, they're taught of how certain things ought to be. As, as we saw this past holiday season, today is New Year's, you know, what they call Christmas. You know, we know according to the scripture that it, that is not according to the word of God. However, a lot of people who don't know any better, just like around what they call so-called Easter, Easter Sunday, which we know, again, is not according to the word of God. However, a lot of people don't go into an assembly until those days. They don't know any better. They think that's the right thing to do. They come in on Christmas or the, that Christmas sun, so-called Christmas Sunday. Don't be stumbled by me using these terms. I'm just speaking in general because I know according to Scripture, Christmas and Easter is, is not according to the Word of God. But for, for, for this video purpose of teach them, I've known that... Um, when on so-called Easter Sunday, they were a lot of people, a lot of visitors would come into the assembly for service because they think that's what is normal, what they're supposed to do. All 365 days of the year, they wouldn't, but that day they come. And on Christmas Sunday, so-called Christmas Sunday, which is no such thing. And I've been in places where that will be the time where the message would be against those people they will say things like you don't come to church for the for all year long except on today and he's sitting there like because he don't know any better like okay i come here and then you make me feel like why shouldn't i have why shouldn't i have come today and then they leave and they don't come back instead of that being an opportunity to say okay you don't even have to you don't even have to mention anything about easter just give them the word. Glory to God in the highest. Give them the word. Teach them. Because that's the only time they come. That's the opportunity for you to really, glory to God, give them the word for their soul. A person who grew up thinking Easter is okay and Christmas is okay. And you and I, that's how I ask myself. When people tell me about Christmas, I say, no. I, I explain to them. But at one time, I'm like, no, I don't celebrate no Christmas. That's, that's foolishness. And they're like, and they know I'm a Christian. They're like, they take him back because they don't understand. But you, you can't wait to, you, if somebody come who has yet to been into service or to hear the word before, and you take that opportunity to bash them, say, oh, you come in the head. Oh. That's what Brother Clinton was talking about. They don't know no better. You have to teach them that, okay, Easter is not according to the scripture. Christmas is not according to the scripture. Talk about Jesus. Talk about his birth. Talk about his, his life. Talk about his death. Talk about his resurrection. His saving. Repentance. Baptism. Glory to God in the highs. But I don't, that's what happens. And, and some people go out wounded and, and, and not knowing any better. And then, then they get into the hands of someone who is false. And then they are even made worse because now they had a bad experience when it should have been a good experience. Now they, they get a, a person who does not know the word of God and make them comfortable and they don't change. And now they feel like they're okay. And that's our fault. Because I know a lot of brethren who struggle with things 
temptations, tests, and trials who are afraid to mention it because they're afraid they look, they, people going to look at them like, oh, you're weak. Oh, you shouldn't be going through that. Who are you to say what a person shouldn't go through? Jesus was tempted in all points like we are, but was without sin. Instead of putting yourself in that person's shoes like, yeah, I went through this too, and help try to restore that brother and, 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 and give that person hope that, is, that, that they don't have to be bound by the circumstances of their test or their trial or their infirmity or their affliction. So you have a lot of people, men and women, young girls, boys, older, middle aged, who sincerely want to do the right thing, who are bound, who are afraid to talk because they're afraid about how somebody's going to view them. I think I, I talked for 11 minutes and I want to get into the scripture, close out in the word of God um, in Hebrews chapter five, beginning at verse 12. This kind of sums up what I was what I was saying for when. For the time, for when for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. What the, what the, what the writer is saying here is that a lot of people going out there teaching, a lot of people out there teaching and some are zealous for good work, some are zealous and not according to knowledge, but they have a zeal of God, but they need to be sat down and taught again. They need to be taught. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. And I notice, I notice a lot of, um, amongst some brethren that I know and other people, and this is one of those moments where you have to acknowledge and commend their zeal for spreading and telling the good news of Jesus Christ. That is a good thing. And continue to tell of the goodness of Jesus Christ, what he has done for you, how he saved your soul from sin, and how, how he redeemed you, and how he showed you, opened up your understanding to repent of your sins and be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ according to the scriptures. That is a beautiful thing. Hear what the word of God says. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongs to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Exercise, that means trained. It's practice. It doesn't happen overnight. So I just want to admonish some of my, my brethren. Don't be so quick to go out and preach and teach because you're going to encounter things that you're not prepared for. I'm speaking this from experience because I was put in a position where, and I thank God for it because it, this is how I can share with you. I was very young, put in, in, into a position that I had to grow into. And it was, you heard of growing pains? It was painful. I'm out preaching and teaching and speaking to people and witnessing to people. But they were, then, then when the suffering came and broke me down and I encountered things that I was not prepared and ready for, I had to be Someone had to teach me. Hallelujah to God. Glory to God in the high. Someone had to teach me. Am I saying, have I, am I at that level fully? No, we still growing daily. We die daily. And the inward man is renewed day by day. But I, so I hope your brother take that in, take that in love because we should not be so quick to go out. As even the Apostle Paul said, he that, you know, Teaches, let him wait on his teaching or, or ministering. Let us wait. Because I think sometimes we get zealous and, and excited, which is like, again, which is good. Tell of the goodness of Jesus Christ. Tell him what he did for you. But going out there with this, with the word of God, and it's going out there so quickly. And, and also, 
those that have not been filled with the Holy Spirit, that it should be your priority to seek the Most High God for the infilling of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in the tongues of the Spirit of God give utterance. Because if you go out there without it, you're going to encounter things that your flesh can never handle on its own. Hallelujah to God. You can never handle a spiritual battle in your flesh. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. I wouldn't exp My son is just turned nine. He was baptized at age seven. And, we, and I questioned him thoroughly because I wanted to make sure he understood what he was doing. I said, okay, you want to be baptized? You want to? He explained to me why, and I, said, and I was satisfied with his answer. He's nine now. You think I'm going to say, okay, son, go out there and start witnessing the folk? No, his priority is to either train him up in the way he should go and understand. He has to understand the importance of having the Holy Spirit. Glory to God that he be, though I have to give him milk. My daughter is four. Yeah, she's saying and 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 because she sees her mom and singing, she sings gospel gospel songs and and she reads her little Bible, and, but she doesn't understand what she means. And we groom her to make sure she understands that she has to pray with her head covered. We have to groom her. I wouldn't go out here and say, oh, um, <laughs> I don't know, have her do something that's not adequate for her age. Cause she hasn't been baptized. Cause she doesn't really understand. She see, she saw her brother do it. She know it. She know it. baptism had to do with water and those things. But understanding sin and repentance, and she hasn't gotten there yet. Now some children younger than her may have, but she's not there yet. Then I have my oldest son, who's ten, who um, who is autistic. He's not so he his mindset is. He has, you know, he has challenges. So it's a, it's a different spectrum in his brain, you know. So I, I have to deal with him. We have to deal with him differently, because his level of comprehension and understanding may be different from his younger brothers. So I share a lot of that to say is that we have to teach. We have to do more teaching. We can't be so quick to put people down who have not yet learned. And um, because it, but strong meat belonging to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. And finally, we go to First Peter chapter two. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. We have to be patient with all men. We have to see, let them develop. We're not excusing wrongdoing. We're not excusing certain behavior. But we just can't expect a person to just automatically. You just you just can't. Like he used the example of someone gave him a a, a, a different version of the Bible, and someone just went to him and said that Bible is of the devil. That was a lack of wisdom on who that person's part. It takes it, you, it, you, you, glory to get to ask God for wisdom. And um, it was painful. And I said, man, I look at myself and say, have I done that? Have I, and with my videos, and, and I don't, you know, have, and so I'm asking God to, you know, be more compassionate and speak less and pray more and, and look at what I went through. Look at what I went through with with hair on my face. How people say, "Oh," and "Oh," and I say, "You know, I thank God for that brother's um, video about that because it was very important." So um, I hope this little video was a blessing. I um, have to get to work today. Not go to work, but I have to get to work because there's a couple of other videos that I want to work on. So God bless you. Peace be unto you.